Okay, so where are we on the fourth of the assault impulses? Crusaders start to push forward to try to make their way into Acre. Now we haven't gotten to the Muslim movement, but I think movement is such an important part of this game that I like to capture what each player is doing in their impulse before any combat. Uh, in each player in particular. An attempt to kind of screen the major portion of the attack here and to destroy the wing. Um, this is risky. I moved my calf here not charging or anything. I didn't have that opportunity. Couldn't do a straight attack. And it doesn't make much difference I don't think. But that, uh, you know, encircles the Muslim forces, which means they have nowhere to retreat. The problem is, I don't have a whole lot of archers back here. So, I might destroy some units that can't retreat, but I'm kind of worried that these knights coming from behind will themselves be wrecked because I'll be able to bring Muslim troops around and encircle the encirclement. Um, Got some new assaults starting there. Anyway, and indeed, encircling the encirclers seems like a good idea. I've got a lot of my light cav. Oh, some infantry kicking in there. Largely surrounding it. They're going to shoot it with arrows. It won't have anywhere to retreat to. And it'll be dissolved. Stupid crusaders. That'll be bad for them. Assuming that there are hits. If I can't concentrate my damage enough, that's not going to happen. But I've also got archers here so I'm gonna pretty much I think be able to dissolve that whole threat and that's a pretty major uh, major change over here I had to, to do some work to get away from you know what the Crusaders were doing I had my archers in the in the front and it's just been bad so I'm kind of turning there but here I'm trying to punch my way forward into the uh, English camp this guy wasn't in command so he couldn't jump up on the wall. And now we've got kind of this ugly position where I don't think there's anything I can do. These guys can do a ladder assault against the empty hex and just climb in there. Yeah. Time to start firing, I guess. Well, missile fire obviously drove some units back. You can see some of the retreats there, some of the hulls left behind. We created some important disruptions see, down here where the Muslims don't have to worry about being counterattacked and they can try to knock something out. But here in the encirclement I chickened out with the Muslims. I used this line to fire and try to save themselves from these guys. Now these guys were in a lot of trouble sitting in the ditch and some of them still are because I didn't manage to get lucky enough to even disrupt a couple of the calf. My light calf weren't positioned well enough. I ended up not even getting a shot on this one. And I didn't get my destructions either that I kind of was hoping to, to see happen. Uh, move on to Foss filling shit. Um, I forgot to mark what could and couldn't fill the Foss. These guys clearly can. They were there. Wow, that counter is... Doesn't look as... rocking garbagey. I, I don't think these guys moved either, but... I didn't mark them. But I think they're able to fill the foss. Um, and now we go to the sets of melee, and I'll be coming back for that one. I've got a long load time or something. After the Crusaders lost their lodgement on the walls, not much else happened. A little bit of disruption, but no units killed or whatever. But over here, I've been searching for Crusader attacks. I haven't done the Muslim army attack yet. They're gonna definitely have some effects. We had an instance where a unit here was attacked. The Saladin uh, guard uh, napped the throwers. They were forced to retreat. And unfortunately, the knights have to chase them. Likewise, over here, now this wasn't as bad, the knights attacked from behind, 
in the entrenchments and broke their way through, destroying a couple of units and having to advance into the uh, outer works there. Now, some units have escaped. Had this, yeah, that is actually capable of attacking. Had escaped being able um, to be attacked by the Muslims. There's just so much weird stuff with the order of play in this game that it just doesn't feel very honest to me. I, I wish that the battle were handled with like great battles of history type detail. Even though there's a significant amount of abstraction there, this just does not feel like a battle to me. Uh, as I've mentioned a number of times. All right, on to the Muslim attack. And though we managed to make some advances with the Muslims, pushing forward. In other places, we actually managed to kill a unit. Uh, I'm not quite sure where. I think here. But if so, I'm not sure why I didn't advance. I should have. Basically, I routed one and then hit one here. Now, he can't retreat through here because melee is not simultaneous. The zone cuts him off and that unit can't negate the zone uh, for retreats. In fact, normally you can't retreat through a unit. Those are just missile units. So yeah, I wanted to advance here. We lost some Bretons. That was actually kind of a, a lucky shot because Conrad's a better leader than Saif here. All right, well, after I flip a few counters that are disordered and, you know, I flipped some of them to undisordered as I went down and didn't disorder things that the Muslims hit because there's no real point to it. After we do that, we move to the next round, and it looks like we're going to get a couple of leaders. Now we start off Impulse 5, and I've done the Crusader movement. They've marched up onto the walls. They're able to do that because there wasn't a zone here. This guy actually slipped in from the back and over. Uh, the zone that the, this guy doesn't project a zone onto the walls. Over here, things were looking pretty weak. Uh, but I am advancing forward. I had this thought because I've shifted the force all the way over of, oh, I could shift these guys over too and really pound. But then I'm risking all my siege equipment and uh, a couple tunnel bases. I can't do that. So I've got to keep a screen there essentially. But this is looking pretty potent, the amount of damage that I might be able to do. Of course, I have to withdraw from those walls at the end of this if I don't win by then essentially. You can see the possibility of a dual victory, though, which ends in a draw, where the city falls, but the camp is so ravaged. Uh, it doesn't look likely that either is going to actually happen. Um, I've pulled the Jerusalem mites over to kind of try and provide a screen here, but it looks like their camp's in a lot of danger. The tunnel base, though, which is more important, because their camp's not big enough. It's only, what, three, seven, ten. I need two more camp spaces. So even if I wipe everything out and take the Kingdom of Jerusalem camp, that's not enough to win me the game as the Muslims. I have to get at least two camp locations down here. The French are obviously safe. The weakness here, well, the English are beginning to pull their, themselves together to form something of a line, but they had one before and they got pushed aside. This is Saladin's best stuff. And then over here, I think, uh, the army of Egypt is getting pretty badly mauled over here. You can see I've got a unit surrounded. That's not going to go anywhere. These guys are going to have trouble moving. They look like they're surrounded by zones as well. So it, they're really kind of on the ropes. Of course, they can maybe get the same bonus of shooting these cav to their death. Like last time, right? Except they didn't really follow through as well as I should have. All right. Uh, we'll figure out where the Muslims are going to move. Missile fire takes a heavy toll, at least where the uh, encirclements have gone. You can see both sides have managed to wipe out what was inside of those. Uh, you got a couple of French cav here, but also some significant Muslim forces were wiped out in this little pocket here. Of course, some of them are coming back. Uh, not so much happening on the walls. Some troops getting forced back. Same as down here. But when you can get an encirclement with archers in place, you can do a lot of damage. Last turn, people kind of went for low odds. 
prevent the other guy from hurting him this turn well the Muslims keyed in on let's destroy those Cav and take our own losses if need be but ours aren't as important I think brings an interesting question that I think is not resolved in the rules from my room memory I'll look it up later but these two are from different contingents but I it's not clear to me whether or not they can combine. They're both French allied. Uh, and in some ways, many of these contingents have one unit of horse. So if you can't combine them, it would pretty much mean that they die on one, one hit. Whereas if it's by contingent rather than unit, uh, they're able to combine and come back as sort of a mixed uh, force. Anyway. It's on to the melee turn. This is getting kind of tense for both sides, really. Um, you can see Saladin's forces in a position pushing through here, but also threatening the English camp. Now, this is the advance after combat rules because uh, some cav went running away. I could move these guys their full four movement allowance along the path of retreat. And that's creating another pocket. I can wipe that out. Great. I got a lot of time left take my 12 tenths. What do the Crusaders feel here? I mean, that's what it comes down to. They got a, they're making the wall. They've got guys on the wall. They got five wall hexes here. Uh, granted, one of them's a breach, but <coughs> still, it shouldn't be impossible for them to get 10 guys in the line in the city, maybe. It's hard to tell, but can I hold this? Will this break in time? Will, will the Crusaders be able to break through there? Or should I call off the attack on the city itself and pull my forces back and drive Saladin back? Because I don't think Saladin can hold up against all of this coming at him. But what do I do? Uh, we had two catapults taken out of the game. They'll be coming back later. One from the city defenses, one from Saladin. Now... Here's the, the tricky part is, this is the worst condition to be trying to do a, an assault on Acre, right? You've got the entirety of Saladin's army coming in. And he actually chose the time. I didn't have that many breaches, etc. Now I've got a lot of Foss filled in. Yeah, they might get rid of some of it, but that's okay. And uh, I'm weakening Saladin's army. This is one of his two choices to attack. It makes more sense from my point of view as the Crusaders to say, this is not the turn to go for the victory. I will have better opportunities later. I still have two, four, five turns to attack. Four of which are not going to be this bad <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so I think trying to haul ass with my troops at this point and save my camps, because I don't want to make this a crapshoot. First of all, I think Saladin's got the edge if I do. And secondly, even if it were an even crapshoot, I can do better than that, I think. I can attack the city with stronger forces. And as the Crusaders call off their attack, you can see them pulling back from the walls. They still have to deal with Saladin, though. Now, the question for him is, what does he want to do? You know, does he want to press the attack? At the very least, he wants to make attacks in such a way that he can try to eliminate more Crusader units. Uh, his own army getting battered, most especially this, the uh, army of Sinjab or whatever, Sinjam, uh, is fairly unimportant. He can only bring that in once more in the game. And the Mosuls and the Egyptians, well, in a sense, they're kind of unimportant too because they can be screened pretty easily. So the real question here is, can I do enough damage? Can I break through to Acre maybe even? Or knock out some of these tunnel bases? <laughs> Those are the bigger goals. Uh, but... The overall, hey, he's not that far from the camps. So I don't think he can take the camps. 
I don't think he can take 12 of them. But he might be able to leverage them to, say, take out this tunnel here. And that would be of value. Although he suspects that may be the one that was triggered. In fact, two, three, four. He's in range of it. The only problem is Saladin's way back here. One, two, three, four. That unit's not in command, so it's not going to be able to make it. Definitely be worth going for after that advance. But he can't quite reach that. Clever of the Crusaders to have noticed that he couldn't quite reach it. Yeah, okay. Um, sure. But yeah, uh, we've got the uh, Templar running away back here, trying to get back behind the outer works to where it can do some good defensively and, and such not. So I think I'm going to continue the attack a little longer at least. First when one side gives ground, it's time to push forward up into the walls, obviously. No, no thought involved in that, but look at this. Coming down to go after uh, the artillery and the uh, possible mining shafts here and here. Well, in this one. More likely these two. Um, this is a risky move. You don't have to do this, but... I feel like I've got the numerical advantage right now, especially with the archers. I can close with these guys, and this is going to force the Crusaders. Do you make a move to try to counter that with another unit? Maybe send the Swabians over there or whatever, and they're particularly bad against the archers. Do you throw some cav in that direction? What, what can you do? It's clear that the uh, Crusaders are a little outnumbered there, and the, the Muslims are probably going to get a slight advantage off of it. They didn't want to come down when they were kind of being attacked, even though they still had that uh, numerical advantage, because things could just shift and they could get wiped out, and then it would be an easy trip into Acre. And then over here, pushing forward, trying to uh, cup these guys into sort of a doom of their own and, and, and maybe get the tents. We'll see. <laughs> You see the results? This is the main area where the uh, Muslims were pushing forward around Saladin's army. Uh, he's sort of beginning to... First of all, he's got this ballista surrounded, which is annoying. And I think Conrad's in there somewhere, right? No, the hospital or leader is in there. So that's a dangerous situation. But he's also beginning to curve around the English camp, which is very, very threatening. Uh with Richard there. This unit, mm, no, there was a unit that should have, yeah, this unit might have been the one now. There was a unit that I thought should have been killed, but I think I got him. I know I got one of these uh, decent hospital or English allied units here and killed it off uh, where it couldn't retreat. Oh, it was down here. It couldn't retreat through uh, between the zones and this unit in the way, it had gotten itself trapped. Uh, but there was another one I thought this guy was in some trouble, but he really wouldn't have been. He could have gone here. I thought I had him pinned better. Anyway. <laughs> uh, maybe it was the ballista. And, and I've just curved around it and gotten it heavier. I didn't get an attack. I didn't get a success against it or something. But... As you can see, Saladin's beginning to position himself here, and by putting the threat here, and maybe even a threat from behind here, although with the number of Crusaders that got pushed back and routed from the main line, and the ones that were still streaming forward, I don't think that's going to happen right now. Anyway, I'll push this forward a little. I hope I remembered last time. I have some suspicions I may not have, and uh, undisrupt some things. Our hobby does is it especially when there are leaders or specific units that are of interest, it, it kind of whets this appetite to question the designer's choices. In this case, if we look at uh, Richard, and I think I'd maybe mention this a little bit, 4337. And then look at Philip, 4337. Uh, that feels a little wrong. I'm not saying Philip was not a fairly decent uh, military leader. But in a t especially strategically, probably better than Richard in some ways. But in a tactical sense, uh, Richard inspired his troops to acts of heroism. 
in our souf and places like that. Maybe he was less effective at Acre, and that's what they're trying to represent. Uh, because certainly, he seems, from my reading of the history and memory, he doesn't, the great heroism came later in, in the Holy Land, although he had already proved his heroism and exceptional command abilities on the field beforehand in France. Now, and that's kind of where, where my troubling issue is, is, you know, this guy is one of the greats in tactical combat uh, of this time. Well, maybe the great in this particular time period. He shouldn't be at parity with Philip in general. But, well, maybe Acre counts a little different because, you know, he wasn't as uh, energized as he would be later in the campaign. But it, it is one of those interesting things to speculate on. Why would you give them the same rating? And why in particular would you give Saladin better ratings when Richard generally bested him? Again, I'm not sure at Acre. I'm not sure about the engagements that happened here. I know uh, Richard was still getting his feet wet or dry uh, in terms of uh, Holy Land combat. So maybe he improves later on. Here we are in Impulse 7. We can see the lines are almost straightening out with this bulge for the uh, Saracens coming through. There's a lot of Crusader power up here. Probably enough to stop Saladin largely in his tracks. But at a cost to these guys, perhaps going to lose maybe important things. But I can't give the game up, right? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I think, I feel like I overreacted. I feel like I should have one more unit over here to destroy these, force them back in the city and prevent that. But there wasn't a unit really readily available. Uh, the Bretons would be under Conrad, would be a good option. But Conrad had been retreated and had fallen back too far, in fact. Given his movement allowance, he can slide up another hex. Um, get some more of his own units under under command. But that that was really the problem. I didn't have anything that could move quickly enough. I moved one cav from back here, but most of my cav is deployed over here where it's really needed. That's the troublesome area. It's over here that I could risk giving something up. What if the German camp falls? No big deal. These are the two big ones. Either one of these largely falling means it becomes very easy to lose the game. The French is as well, but it's off on its own. You can't really win the game with the French camp, right? You can only get 10 here, then you got to take the German camp too, and that's fairly distant. These two are fairly close together with a lot of meaty riches. The problem? Well, the Muslims don't really want to be in there. They get off, off the terrain chart. They're halved if they're in there. Between looting and the cook hitting them with a skillet and uh, the camp followers offering, never mind. Uh, anyway, I, you know, there's going to be a lot of distraction and a lot of trouble for them there, whereas the Crusaders don't get a penalty because they're fighting for their own goods and their own holdings. Uh, this is turning out not to be a risky move after all. Unless, of course, this entire force just could head right down this way and down. But that, that can't happen. And there's only, uh, there's not enough troops to even break through the wall and get a victory. I'd have to bring another attack in. It's really denuded this wall. But again, the Crusaders have to focus on one thing or another. And right now they're focusing on Saladin's arm. The nature of missile fire in this game is strange because it's essentially a way to knock units back more than anything else. Yes, you can get some kills, and I think I, I think I may have gotten one here. Yeah, uh, the hospitalers here were wiped out by archery, which well they probably would have been wiped out by this as well. But now it frees up possible attacks to hurt some of this stuff. What it doesn't do though is it doesn't knock the ballista out early. Lost off. Uh, Taki. That used to be my nickname. Uh, and uh, when I was very young. Uh, 
And I guess there's not a lot more to say. I'm ready to hit the main attack, but there were some, you know, engagements here. So it just really prevents the melees from happening because if it doesn't knock units back as it's done with these, which is pretty impressive, actually, it's going to take them several turns to get back because they don't have a leader up there. They've been knocked way back. Uh, so they're, you know, you can kind of figure, well, they're routed and they'll keep retreating and there's all kinds of if if somebody advances, if they could actually get involved in something. There's all kinds of dancing you can do in your, your head to come up with why this kind of works. But it's kind of disturbing to see things go flying across the map that far. Um, but the other thing is you get these disruptions which say, yeah, they're not going to attack. So largely it's just this huge ability to deaden the actual melee capabilities of any of the forces involved. And speaking of which, we'll roll some dice for those now. And another impulse passes with what feels like little or no real effect. Yes, I'm creeping forward, it seems like. I'm gonna get the ballista out of the way. That'll be somewhat helpful, maybe. My real goal is right here, the tunnel, probably. That's probably the extent of what I can do. These guys, I'm not sure they can actually break through and do any damage. If they can take some catapults out, that'll help. But I, I don't want to lose units off my garrison making this assault. And I'm pretty much stymied. Uh, I guess I could run my cav around. They're not allowed in the walls, though. So they can't slip in, I don't think. I know I'm not allowed to do ladder assaults. Maybe I'm allowed to actually go on the walls with them. I don't remember where it says it. Yeah, I'll have to look for that because it might be of value to try to take, you know, some of these cav and to see if I can slip them through. It's going to be really tough, but there is a certain, because there's no assault going on at the city, that's where the closest cordon can be held. You know, there's gaps running through here. I just don't think I can make it through them with units retreating back. I'll end up losing, you know, a unit for no good reason, maybe. What are my losses like? Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This doesn't count. So I'm about halfway to the uh, penalty point. And here entering uh, impulse eight. The Crusaders are really kind of able to tighten up their line. Still a gap here. Still some danger, but not really a lot. The uh, tunnel base is being covered even. Uh, the only real danger right now to them, they're going to lose this battle. Uh, um, wow. Well, um, uh, the Ballista. Brain just totally failed there. I was able to throw a bunch of uh, horses in here to help support uh, the French king. And to me, it looks like a, at about this point, we're talking little or no effect to this raid by Saladin, other than whatever casualties it caused. Now I'm just going to start playing for opportunistic attacks rather than anything else. If you know, if I can isolate a unit and kill it or whatever, that's that's all I can really hope for. I can't get victory here, and I don't think I can hit a tunnel with any reasonable op opportunity that I see. Into impulse nine here. Um, after doing the melees, really almost no effect. You have some retreats. But that's about it. There's no ground that can be gained of any value anymore, I think. It's hard to tell for sure. There's still sort of a gap here. But once you get into the tents, the um, Muslims lost a unit in this tent here. A useful horse, a good horse unit. In a sense, you, they almost want to call the attack off. Uh, they're not getting any really good positioning because where they've got all their forces in the center if they had it on the flanks or had it on one of the flanks they might be able to do some kind of neat stuff but it's tough uh, 
you know, to get a grasp on a unit. When the ballista was out there and the Crusaders were trying to defend that, that was worth it. We may well just be calling a, a pullback here. There's not enough time to take the city. There's not enough time for much of anything to happen. And I, I the only, so for the Muslims, you could say, well, they outnumber the Crusaders in terms of uh, archers. The problem is, other than the archers of the eye here, most of their archers at range two are gonna be firing on the two table. The two table doesn't do diddly. The best you get is a retreat out of it. But the crossbowmen all fire on the three table. So, if the Crusaders have crossbowmen up front, and they can even put them up front, they can get significant attacks. If you actually attack those crossbowmen, they get a shot at you first on the four table, which is starting to look a lot uglier. So it's really tough to kind of, you know, assault the Crusaders, even in kind of a limited fashion that you'd expect. You'd have to find where there are no archers and kind of, uh, you know, position a lot of your archers. But unless you put your archers at risk in the, in, in, at the range one where they can get on the three table and actually get an elimination result possible. There's very little point to it if you're not gonna, if you don't have some goal in mind. And you can see we're falling back towards the wall. I just don't see anything being gained from this assault anymore. So I think I'll probably, uh, probably pull back. Withdrawal is effectively quite easy. Uh, for the Muslims, because they move last, they can just pull back. And likewise, here along the wall. And there's just not time to start another assault on the walls. There's time for the Crusaders to push forward just one more turn. But what it comes down to is the archers of the eye are the only thing that are going to really be effective because the Muslims can pull back from everything else out of reasonable range so that they're not going to be facing uh, Christian crossbowmen who can sh possibly eliminate them. But the archers of the eye can eliminate something at range two. They're the only thing the Muslims have that can do so. So I'm going to just leave it like this and take one more pot shot at these uh, Swabians. Well, the Swabians will probably pull out of there. But I've got to leave something on the line and someone is going to uh, <coughs> move forward. So, someone's going to be in place where they can get shot. So I'll take one more shot with the archers of the eye. They got a lucky shot against the Swabians in a sense, but didn't do anything effective. And otherwise, I'll call that the end of this assault. Really abstracted that all as just a die roll on the four table. I don't feel like going through all the movement yet again for no real reason. Uh, chances are the Muslims would have pulled back behind the outer works, but who cares? Uh, now comes sort of a setting back up. All the Muslim armies from exterior go back in their boxes. I get to reset the defenses at Acre. All the Crusaders get to uh, set up again. But most interestingly, we do this pairing off process here. Well, let's see how that works. First of all, I've got some questions about how it works. But basically, units are going to get killed, and other units, killed as in permanently, are going to get played on the board. So I work through these pair-offs. So far I haven't had a problem, but I'm going to come to one, I'm sure. Uh, these are Fatag 2. Fatag 2. Now, the garrison stays in here. I keep that kind of separate from these others. These guys just stay in here. When I take more losses, they might pair up as well. I've got to remember how many units I've lost permanently. So this is one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. That'll be doubled and count as 14 losses. Um, and then 15, 16, 17 total losses. I don't count the garrison. So I can take 13 more before I take a morale hit on both sides of the army of the Muslims. Now here's the tricky part. You can see things don't quite match up. So what do I do with Gion and uh, the Templars? What do I, well, these aren't the same type. And that's the only case that I have to worry about because these Hospitallers, I can exchange properly and get one in there. And let's look at the rules on this, I guess. I'll come back. Unfortunately, the game is not really good at defining things. They say by nationality. There's no, uh... glossary or anything like that where I can look up what nationality is. <clears throat> the, uh, I can try looking and try figuring it out, but you know, honestly, it's just not worth it for me. I'm going to declare that the overall contingent or whatever is the same as the nationality because otherwise you've got these guys stuck out here, these calves that I, I don't like having this happen to. And it doesn't really matter which one it is. Uh, I'll eliminate the Guyan ones and put the Templars on the board, I guess. It doesn't really make much difference. It's their cav, except in terms, uh, because they don't have to worry too much about command lines. One thing that does matter, though, is the initial setup. Uh, but, again, I don't have to worry too much about that. So somewhere I'm going to mark down that I've got 14 losses so I can toss these suckers in the bag. And these guys, of course, just go in. And now, before I move into turn 12, I've got to set everything back up again. And here's what the board looks like after that setup. Um, I've changed things a little bit. For example, the Templars are now on the line here. I've moved Guyon onto the line with the Angevines back here under Philip uh, to defend along there, the Bretons. I like their fast movement, so I want to keep them on the defensive side, uh, on the outer works. The Swabians, you know, they're just tough to use anywhere. They're heavy, heaviest units in the game, but the shots against them are so uh, potent that... But I, if I want them anywhere, I want them on the wall, uh, attacking the walls, I guess. You can see I've moved Richard onto the line now, and the Hospitallers. I want those heavier units to try to punch their way through. Whereas, with my other units, you can see I've got a much, much weaker setup defensively now in terms of what I'm covering, I think. Especially here, it looks kind of weakened. The point is, though, if a full salad and attack comes, I can call off any kind of assault that I'm performing. Whereas if uh, if it's just one of these smaller forces, I can handle that with what I've got on the board, I'm pretty sure. It may slow things down a little bit, but those are not going to put a real uh, risk on the game at, anymore. So we're entering turn 12 and I've got to make my big decision here as to, you know, whether or not I want another assault. I got a lot of ground on the last one. And whether I take it or not, I've also got to make the same decision for Saladin, whether or not he wants another assault. I'm trying to think of where I am on the tunneling situation. I don't know where the Crusaders' tunnels are. And that was what sparked the last one. So to some extent, I may want to just launch another Saladin attacks before any of these get any weaker. I don't want to get those hurt on kind of a useless situation. So, yeah, it's uh, this is where the interest of the game really is. It's in the bombardment and the picks phase. I don't really, although I gripe about it, I gripe about everything, right? Uh, there is a certain enjoyment 
to the assaults themselves, even all that bouncing around and everything, eh, you know, there's, there's a certain fun to playing those out. But for me, the big fun is kind of in, hey, when do, do I make this choice or not? Now, I wouldn't want, this is the Euro issue, I wouldn't want to have to make really important choices again and again and again in a tight cycle. I really kind of like playing out something based on those big choices I made. That's why I like big uh, campaigns like doing SFB within a Federation and Empire game. Because I'm going to have lots and lots of little choices affecting, you know, the, the individual combats. But in the overall picture of things, those choices matter so much less than the big ones of the movement or whatever. Anyway. I like those different scales, I like different levels of decision making, and I'd rather do things out that are fairly mechanical and unimportant in the grand scope of the game than maybe make lots of really hard choices regularly that heavily impact the game. I don't know. That's just me. Uh, Alright, I'm going to load this one up because God knows what the next one's going to be. <laughs>